Before Donald Trump's Postmaster General, Louis DeJoy, said that he would not be doing any changes to the Postal Service until after the election, you know, one other thing that worried me, another implication of Trump's attacks on mail-in voting, or I should say his lies on, you know, mail-in voting, is that this could encourage his supporters to take action themselves. If he works them into a frenzy and they're hysterical about mail-in voting and they are expecting fraud, this could lead to voter intimidation. Where if he says, look, you've got to watch out because there's going to be a lot of people committing fraud and cheating and possibly voting illegally, then what's going to happen? With the emergence of far-right militias across the country in response to Black Lives Matter protests, it's not going to be too surprising if we see that pop up at the polls. If they think somebody is being a little bit too suspicious or is a little bit too brown to be a legal citizen, maybe they take action. Maybe they intimidate or harass that individual. Now, this hasn't officially happened yet, but if Trump keeps doing what he's doing and saying what he's saying and encouraging what he's encouraging, then uh, we could be looking at a disaster come election time when these groups do pop up. Now, again, this is speculation because... We haven't actually seen um, anyone take up arms and guard polling stations, if you will, for lack of a better word. But what we did catch was a glimpse of this possibly happening when um, early voting started in Virginia and Trump supporters showed up to protest. So as the New York Times reports, Trump supporters disrupt early voting in Virginia. A group waving Trump flags and chanting four more years created a commotion at a polling location in Fairfax, Virginia. A county official said some voters and staff members felt intimidated. Now we'll just pause there before we dive into the article. Um, That was the goal. Mission accomplished. Like you can argue Maybe these people just showed up because they were excited about early voting and they were enthusiastic about Donald Trump and they just wanted to, you know, express that enthusiasm. But do we really think that's happening? Should we be that charitable in our interpretation after Donald Trump for months has been fear-mongering and lying about mail-in voting and voting in general that the left is going to cheat and Democrats are going to cheat? I mean, I think we know what these people wanted to do. They wanted to send a message to people showing up to vote. A message that was pretty clear. We're watching you. If you're going to cheat, we're watching you. Now, some people may be conflict averse and, you know, might get awkward and be a little bit intimidated by that. And because you show a certain look on your face because you're scared seeing all these lunatics protest at a polling station, um, maybe they think, hey, you look suspicious. Why are you afraid? You have no reason to be afraid. I mean, this could lead to harassment. And it's happening because of Donald Trump. Now, for this specific situation, there's been a little bit of misinformation that has been spread. Some people think that they were blocking people from entering the polling booth. Uh, but that's not actually what took place based on this article and what they're reporting. So they explained county election officials eventually were forced to open up a larger portion of the Fairfax County Government Center to allow voters to wait inside away from the Trump enthusiasts. Election officials said that the group stayed about 100 feet from the entrance to the building and, contrary to posts on social media, were not directly blocking access to the building. But they acknowledged that some voters and polling staff members felt intimidated by what some saw as protesters. Citizens coming into and leaving the building did have to go by them, Gary Scott, the general registrar of Fairfax County, said in a statement. Those voters who were in line outside of the building were moved inside and we continued operations. Some voters and election staff did feel intimidated by the crowd and we did provide escorts past the group. One of the escorts was the county executive. So even if we're kind to them, the effect that they had, even if it was unintentional, was negative. People felt intimidated. Rightfully so. I mean, if you have to open up a certain area so voters can get away from these people who are causing a commotion at a polling station, that's a problem, regardless of what their intentions were. And I'm being a lot more charitable than I should be, I think. Um, the result was negative. But this is basically um, the least of my concerns with what Donald Trump supporters could possibly do if this continues. Um, and I'll tell you why it's happening, because Donald Trump continues to tell his supporters the other side is going to cheat i want you my supporters to watch them he did this just the other day he said 
they're going to cheat. It's not about if they cheat, it's when they're going to cheat. It's a certainty. So get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors, get your co-workers, get everybody, and get out and vote. Got to get out and vote. And in your state, in Ohio, early voting has already begun, and don't wait. And when you see them cheating on the other side, I don't say if, when, when you see them cheating with those ballots, all of those unsolicited ballots, those millions of ballots, you see them, anytime you do, report them to the authorities. The authorities are waiting and watching. That is deeply, deeply disturbing. Voter intimidation, like this sort of thing, is what we see and expect from uh, dictatorships, autocrats, in authoritarian regimes, but we're seeing it here in America. Now, back in June, the Washington Post did an analysis of mail-in voting. And do you want to know what the fraud rate is for mail-in voting? 0.0025%. So all of this commotion, fear-mongering he's causing is over 0.0025%. Now, what's especially disturbing is he's telling his voters to expect the other side to cheat, but he's not even very specific. So you're encouraging people to look out for cheaters, but they don't even know what they're supposed to be looking out for. Are you alleging that there's going to be like people bringing in suitcases full of ballots to vote multiple times? What are you insinuating that they should be looking for? Do you understand why this is dangerous? Because you have imbeciles who are going to, at the behest of Donald Trump's wish, show up to polling stations and maybe try to intimidate people. You could have a far-right militia wave guns in voters' faces, letting them know if you cheat, there's going to be ramifications for your actions and they don't even know what they're looking for. What's that? You are uh, brown or black? Are you a legal citizen? Do you have any papers? Like, do you understand what they're going to do if this does actually come to fruition? If Donald Trump gets what he wants? Like, what we're seeing with them protesting, that's like the least of what we should be concerned with, even if it is a nuisance. What I'm worried about is outright voter intimidation from far-right thugs that we are seeing become more and more prevalent across the country. Now, in saying all of this, Donald Trump, again, is reinforcing this idea that it's us versus them, right? He's reinforcing this idea that we are good and the other side is evil. And, you know, it's not just Democrats who are the enemy to, uh, you know, MAGA chuds. It's also the media because at another rally, he literally celebrated the fact that Ali Velshi of MSNBC, when he was covering the Minneapolis protests, was shot by police with a tear gas canister. He made fun of that and said it was a glorious sight. And um, there's something even more disturbing about that. See if you could pick it up when you watch this. I remember this guy, Welchie, he got hit on the knee with a canister of tear gas, and he went down. He didn't, he was down. My knee, my knee. Nobody cared. These guys didn't care. They moved him aside. And they just walked right through. It was like, it was the most beautiful thing. No, because after we take all that crap, for weeks and weeks, they would take this crap, and then you finally see men get up there and go right through. Did, wasn't it really a beautiful sight? Yeah. Well, law and order, law and order. It was a beautiful thing, the president said, of police assaulting a journalist. Now, the more disturbing thing that I hope you picked up on was the fact that the crowd was cheering when Donald Trump said that. Understand the impact that Donald Trump is having on American culture. He's getting his far-right followers to embrace violence, to not just warm up to the idea of doing violence against the other side, but to celebrate it when it takes place. Because everything that they do by definition is bad because they are the enemy. It is us versus them. Remember that. And he reinforces this time and again. He is deeply, deeply dangerous. And what he is encouraging here is, I worry about what's going to happen. Now, I hope that 
you know, all of my concerns are unfounded and, you know, voters are able to make their voices heard democratically with uh, no issues whatsoever. But am I naive to think that that's going to be the likely scenario that plays out? Uh, naive enough to believe that, I should say. Uh, no, I think that we're probably not going to see everything go smoothly. I think that Donald Trump will ramp up fear-mongering depending on where he is, according to polls, towards the election. And we will maybe see far-right thugs show up to intimidate people at polling stations with guns. I mean, if they show up to intimidate Black Lives Matter protesters, you know, under the guise of protecting property and stopping looters, is it really that ridiculous to think that maybe they'd show up to um, protect democracy from cheaters? Not at all. Not at all. And, you know, I am hesitant to even talk about this because I don't want to put this idea into people's heads if they didn't already have it. But I just, I see where we're headed and the trajectory that we are on looks bad. It looks really bad. And I worry. So I talk about this to warn people to um, be prepared because... We have no idea what Donald Trump and his goons are going to try. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay?